Dividing rational numbers like dividing integers? Think about this question during the lesson. Yumiko uses a rain barrel to collect rainwater for her garden. The rain barrel has a drip hose attached. The water drains from the rain barrel at a constant rate. Three and three fifths gallons drain from the barrel in six minutes. What is the change in the volume of water after one minute? You can start by estimating. What are two ways to estimate the change in the amount of water in one minute? You could use mental math to show that. Because the total change is a little more than negative three, the quotient should be a little more than negative three divided by six or negative one-half. Or, you could use a number line to visually estimate one-sixth of negative three and three-fifths. Select the section of the number line where the quotient is. Select your answer. A total of three and three-fifths gallons of water drain from the barrel in six minutes. To find the rate of change over one minute, divide the given change in volume into six equal parts. So, divide negative three and three-fifths by six. The change after one minute is negative three-fifths gallons. You can also find the quotient by using the rules for multiplication. Begin by converting the mixed number, negative 3 and 3 fifths, to a fraction. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18. So the fraction is negative 18 fifths. To divide two fractions, multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the denominator. Two numbers whose product is 1 are multiplicative inverses, or reciprocals. Find the product of the fractions by multiplying the two numerators and the two denominators. Negative 18 times 1 is negative 18. 5 times 6 is 30. The product is negative 18 thirtieths, or negative 3 fifths. You can extend what you know about multiplying rational numbers and dividing integers to division of rational numbers. The rules for integer division tell you that when you divide a negative by a positive, your quotient should be negative. That still works in this situation, dividing rational numbers. So, the change in the volume of water after one minute is negative three-fifths gallons. Suppose that the volume of water in the rain barrel decreased by four and five-eighths gallons in four minutes. What will be the change in the volume of water after one minute? The rain barrel will lose blank gallons in one minute, so let's figure this out. All right, so the volume of water in the rain barrel decreased by four and fifth eighths, five eighths gallons in four minutes. What will be the change <clears throat> after one minute? So they set up the problem for us, some parts of it, and we have to fill it in. So we're dividing by four over one, and I've told you in a previous lesson that any whole number as a fraction is just that number over one. So that's exactly what they did. So they took the four minutes and put it over one. So that's where that four over one comes from. And so we have to divide the amount of water in that rain barrel um, by the four minutes so we can get the change in that volume of water after the one minute. So we have four and five eighths, which was the water in the rain barrel. Uh, that's how much it decreased by. So we have four and five eighths. They only have one blank space. 
above this 8 here, which means we are going to have to take this mixed number and make it an improper fraction. So we know 8 times 4 is 32, plus 5 will be 37. So we're going to put 37 in that blank space. Now we're going to just simply um, divide the fractions, and we do know again from a previous um, lesson that when you're dividing fractions, it's keep, change, reciprocal, right? So we're going to keep 37 over 8, change division to multiplication, which they already have the dot here. I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker. There you go. And then 4 over 1 would now be 1 fourth. Okay. And then we're able to multiply straight across. Um, in this instance, I do like to simplify first, but 37 and 4 do not have a common factor and 1 and 8 don't have a common factor. So we have to just multiply straight across. So 37 times 1 is 37 and then 8 times 4 is 32. And so now we have 37 over 32, which we need to, it's an improper fraction, so we need to make it into a mixed number. So we're going to take the denominator, divide it into our numerator, it goes into it once. Then we subtract, that's 5, so we have the 1 there already. The 5 becomes our new numerator, and 32 stays the same. And in all of these parts, that negative is still there. So it's negative 1 and 5 30 over 32 as the amount of, of rainwater that is lost in a minute in this barrel. Divide 3 and 2 thirds divided by negative 2 thirds. A complex fraction has a fraction in the numerator and the denominator or both. So in this case, we have a fraction in both the denominator and numerator. So here's how we solve that. We divide it because a fraction bar is basically a division symbol, right? So we know when we see a fraction bar, we're dividing the numerator and denominator. So they took the, um, the, the, the numerator divided by the negative two thirds. So then we do the mixed number as an improper fraction. We get 11 over 3. And then we do keep change reciprocal, which is that multiplicative inverse. Um, and then we multiply straight across. Um, and then they did that. We got 33 over 6. And then simplify that to 11 over 2. And then negative 5 and half is that final answer as a mixed number. So let's look at these, finding each quotient. So let's look at um, let's look at A first. So, degree. So I'm going to have, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 and 2 fifths divided by negative 1 over 5. And that would be in parentheses just because there's a negative. And so then I'm going to make my mixed number into an improper fraction. So that's going to be 7 fifths divided by um, negative 1 fifth. And then we're going to do keep change reciprocal. So we're going to keep 7 fifths and then change division into multiplication. And we have 5 over 1, negative 5 over 1. And then we're going to simplify first because that's what Ms. Bozeman's like, I like to do first. So I'm going to look diagonally. Whenever I see I can simplify, I simplify first. So we have 5 and 5 can be divided by 5. So that's going to be a 1, negative 1, and that's going to be a 1. And then 7 and 1 do not have a common uh, factor to divide by, so we multiply straight across. So we have 7 times negative 1, which is negative 7, and then 1 times 1 is 1. So then our final answer is negative 7. So the quotient for A is negative 7. All right, let's look at... Uh, You know, I feel like the other ones, I'm going to do one more because I feel like the other ones are pretty um, pretty similar to, to problems we've done in previous lessons. I'm going to do D. Yeah, I'm going to do D. So let's look at D. Um, 
All right, so D is 0 and 7 tenths divided by 1 and 1 six. So I'm going to do 1 and 1 six as an um, improper fraction. So 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So that's going to be 7 over 6, and that's going to be negative. I'm going to put it in, put it in parentheses. Um, and 7 tenths, let me make it a fraction too, just so they're both fractions. All right, so 7 tenths I mentioned in another lesson that because 7 is in the tenths place to make it a fraction, just put 7 over 10. So that's easy enough. Now we're going to do keep, change, reciprocal. So we have keep, change, reciprocal, keep 7 tenths, change division to multiplication, and then we have 6 over 7, and that's still negative. All right, then we can simplify these. We do see something I can simplify. Yay. So we look across 7 and 7. I can divide both by 7. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. Um, 7 divided by 7 is 1. <clears throat> and then we have 10 and 6. They also have a common factor, which is 2. So I'm going to divide 6 by 2 and get 3, 10 by 2 and get 5. And now I'm going to multiply straight across. And remember that negative 6 over 7 is still negative. So when I multiply 1 and uh, 3, that's going to be a negative 3. So that would be negative 3 over 5. And then we have our final answer, which is negative 3 fifths. Um, if you wanted to put that in a decimal, so let's say we're going to put it back into a decimal um, form, all you have to do is take your denominator, divide it into your numerator. And I probably should have wrote this a little bit higher. Let me just write it up here. So um, 5 into 3, and that obviously cannot go into it, so we're going to create that decimal. So we're going to put a decimal here and add a 0. 5 can go into 30 six times, and that equals 30. And then it, it thankfully goes into it equally, so our decimal is 0 0.6. So our answer could either be 0 and 6 tenths or negative 3. And it has to be negative. I'm sorry, I forgot to add that. Negative 0 and 6 tenths or negative 3 fifths. There it the same. All right. The location of a submarine changes by negative three and six tenths kilometers in an hour. How many minutes will it take for the submarine to get to the sea bottom? Divide the location of the sea bottom by the change in the location of the submarine in minutes. So the, the change is at negative 3 fourths kilometers. Um, I'm sorry, we have negative 3 and 6 tenths kilometers. Um, and then an hour in minutes is 60 minutes. So we multiply the negative 3 and 6 tenths. I'm sorry, divide. I keep saying the wrong thing. Divide negative 3 and 6 tenths and um, 60 and then we're going to take the negative 3 fourths make it in, into a decimal so 0 negative 0 75 hundredths divided by the quotient of negative 3 and 6 tenths divided by 6 which is negative 0 and 6 hundredths and that is equal to 12 and 5 tenths when you divide them so the rules for dividing integers applies for all rational numbers. So a negative divided by a negative is equal to a positive. The same way as when you multiply a negative and a negative, it equals a positive. So it, it takes 12 and a half minutes to reach the C bottom. All right, find each quotient. So this is the same as the previous lesson in dividing um, fractions or rational numbers. Um, I'm only going to do, let's see. I'm going to do C and D. I think, yeah, I'm going to do C and D. So let's look at um, C. So C is two parts to it. We have in parentheses negative 3 and 10, 3 tenths divided by 2 divided by 9 tenths 
negative nine tenths outside of the parentheses. So with order of operations, um, you know it's PEMDAS, right? So we have PEMDAS. And <clears throat> so P is for parentheses. And actually, I'm going to change that. Because in middle school, you not only have parentheses, but you also have other types of grouping like brackets and all these other ways to group numbers together. So I'm going to say GEMDAS. So GEMDAS is any type of grouping. Um, and then that's always first. And then you have exponents as the E. M is multiplication. D is division. A is addition. Um, and S is subtraction. So here we're going to do the G grouping. Those parentheses are grouping that negative three and ten, three tenths divided by two together. So we're going to solve that first. So whole number is a fraction when you put it over one. And then we're going to do keep change reciprocal. So we're going to keep three tenths, change division to multiplication. And then we have the reciprocal of two over one. And then we multiply straight across. So when we multiply straight across, we get negative three over 20. And so now we have uh, that quotient. We're going to take that and divide it by the negative 9 tenths uh, we have on the outside of the parentheses. So now I'm going to rewrite it over here. Negative 9 tenths divided by negative 3 over 20. And then we do keep change reciprocal. So that's 9 tenths, change this multiplication, 20 over 3. And then in this case, we can simplify first. So I'm going to look across at 10 and 20. I can divide both by 10. That equals 1. 20 divided by 10 equals 2. And 9 and 3 also have a factor, which would be 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then we multiply straight across. So 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. And I also want to add that there was a negative 9 tenths, so that's a negative 6 over, um, oh, they were both negative. That's right. It was negative 9 tenths and negative 3 over 20. So a negative and a negative equal a positive, so there is no more negative. And a, a fraction where 1 is the denominator is a whole number, so our final answer for C would be 6. All right, good. All right, let's look at D. So D is multiplying a decimal and a fraction. Um, in this case, uh, negative 3 over 13, um, it's not as uh, quick to change it to a decimal. So I'm going to just make negative 0 and 5 tenths a, de a, a fraction instead of making the negative 3 over 13 a decimal. So negative 5 uh, tenths as a fraction is negative 5 tenths. So you literally write it as, as you would say it. So I'm going to divide that by negative um, 3 over 13. And so we do keep change reciprocal. And then that's going to be 13 over 3 negative. All right, and then we multiply straight across. Um, unfortunately, they do not have any common factors, so we can simplify first. So we're just going to multiply straight across. 10 times 3 is 30. 5 times um, 13 65. That's negative. And that's an improper fraction, so we're going to simplify that. So... Um, I rewrite it over here. So we're going to take the denominator, divide it into our numerator. Um, we could go into it twice. That equals 60. We got 5. So now our final um, answer here would be 2 and 5 over 30. But 5 over 30 can be simplified. Um, 5 and 30 have a common factor of 5. So this would end up being um, 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 30 divided by 5 is 6. 
So I'm going to put the equal sign over here because I don't have space over there. So that'll be final, final answer is 2 and 1, 6. So this is our final, final answer. Thank you.